The House of Representatives voted this week to make the District of Columbia America's 51st state, my hometown. That would make it the newest U.S. state since Hawaii was admitted in 1959 and give the district full representation in Congress. Now, it's become almost a cliche to say that a bill that makes it through the House faces a difficult future in the Senate. But with this bill in particular, eh, that has never been more true. But sovereignty has had a long and challenging history. I know I was part of the staff as an intern with Congressman Fontroy in 1978, working to help uh, pass a proposed constitutional amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which would have given the district congressional representation, although not statehood. It passed both the House and Senate, but needed ratification by 38 states. And after six years, only 16 states had agreed, and the effort died. Despite past challenges, statehood advocates feel that this time might be just a bit different. One of them is my next guest, Eleanor Holmes Norton, who represents the district in Congress, where she serves on the House Oversight and Transportation and Infrastructure Committees. Congresswoman, it is such a treat to have you. It is always good to be with you. Welcome. Good to be with another native Washingtonian. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, look, this is this is exciting stuff. Uh, no matter how you cut it, to see this legislation move the way it has, to have the support and the imprimatur of the president of the United States. Uh, the House passed a bill last year on statehood, uh, but a Republican Senate blocked it. How does it feel to get this bill this far? knowing that it is in a far different position than it was a year ago, uh, and having the kind of support that you see from not just Democrats, but the, the president himself. Well, the president's support is, is emblematic of the broad support we're having. And look what we, we, we've done. Um, 54 percent of the American people now support statehood. How did that happen? It happened because the hearings themselves educated Americans about what they didn't know about their own nation's capital, that the people who live here, more than 700,000 of us, don't have the same rights they have. So now you have the bill supported by 57 percent in the swing mm -hmm. states. Uh, we have across the board support, Demo uh, we have men and women. We have black and white. It looks like the, the more exposure the bill has, the more people come to it. They don't want to be the only country, democratic country in the world, which does not give full representation to their own people in their own capital. So you've got a lot of advocates out there, Congresswoman, who, who see the bill as uh, writing a historic injustice and, and a way to protect uh, minority voting rights. Uh, how do you see it? Uh, what, what's significant about this bill, given where this effort has come from uh, and what it ultimately may mean for the country? Well, it, it, it's interesting that people see it as a way to protect minority voting rights. Uh, it's true that the district would have more uh, African Americans than any state, but the fact is that for most of our existence, for 220 years, uh, the district was a majority white state, and still it couldn't get equal representation, even equal voting rights. Uh, the more educate, the more the public is educated, the more they have come uh, to support this bill. So much so that we think that the slogan that has brought them to the bill most is taxation without representation. Right. Remember, that's the way we fought a war in taxation without representation. We even get 42 percent of Republicans supporting the bill when they <laughs> see taxation without representation. So, so you're talking about educating the public. So it's seeming we're having a hard time educating a lot of my Republican friends uh, on on this matter. I want you to take a, a moment to listen to a few arguments from Republicans uh, and, and get your reaction to them. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning, because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. <laughs> okay, that, 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 wasn't, that wasn't the Republican I was had in mind. 
<laughs> but you've got a lot. You've got a lot of Republicans out there saying uh, that you know, well, you know, D.C. doesn't have uh, you know the population. Um, D.C. doesn't have the economy. Uh, D.C. can't govern itself. Um, what's your response to a lot of those uh, you know ideas that somehow D.C. just is not up to the task of becoming a state? Well, the, the district of governing himself, and, uh, as well as any other jurisdiction in the United States today, it has a flourishing, uh, it has a flourishing budget because so many people want to live in the District of Columbia. If you want to know the real problem the district will have, it is that most states which have gotten statehood have come in two at a time. One was Democrat, one was Republican. Right. The district is having to do it on its own, and still it's got 54 percent of the American people supporting statehood. Uh, I think we can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we've gotten rid of the filibuster for, for everything except legislation. We got, we got rid of it for uh, nominations. Uh, the Senate was late holding up this year over the filibuster. Uh, and I think if we get rid of it, uh, the filibuster, that 60 vote margin for everything else, it, you're going to have to get rid of it for statehood as well. Each time this bill goes on the floor, remember, we just got it passed once before. It usually takes right. more than one session of Congress to pass a bill. I think each time we educate the people more and more because the bill passes, the closer we get to becoming the 51st state. So real quick, uh, Congresswoman, you, you touched on something I think is interesting. You talked about states coming in two by two, uh, and, and D.C. is prepared to come in by itself. There's been some conversation about the possibility of an alignment with Puerto Rico and the, the great discussion that we also know around making Puerto Rico a state. Is that an option uh, either now or on the back end of this, as if, if it gets jammed up in the Senate, to, to bring in Puerto Rico along with D.C.? I think that is an option. Puerto Rico is a little, it would be a terrific. They have even more people than we have. And their delegate is a Republican. They are having hearings because they have never decided whether they want to take in all the obligations right. of state. Remember, they don't pay full, full federal income taxes. But it looks like they're drawing more and more toward statehood as well. Uh, they have a very difficult situation because they are in the Caribbean, which means that the country is having to pump money into Puerto Rico, and you got to be able to show you can support yourself. Still, I'm hopeful about, about Puerto Rico. Well, Congressman Eleanor Holmes Norton, on behalf of my parents, I thank you for your great work and leadership <laughs> here, and, uh, and we look forward to uh, your success uh, in making D.C. number 51. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.